So my unhinged act of the day is I woke up and chose violence. I decided to go to Target and get some fall things. And I decided to do this because I've had major anxiety about driving my car recently. And so I thought, hey, what better way to practice driving again and to make it not scary than to give myself a little reward afterwards. So I went to Target, bought some candles that smell like pumpkins, bought some pumpkin oat milk creamer. I'll show you. From Califia, of course. Love. And now I'm making myself some coffee. I've lit my candles, I've got the coffee made, about to mix it all up, and I'm gonna read. Because I deserve it. You know what I mean? I just deserve it. I did something hard today. So. The question is. Do I put something else in the coffee or do I just enjoy this as it's um, in its purity? Let's try it without anything sweet first and then, and then, and then. Oh, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls have pumpkin oat creamer in their fridge. <laughs> Queen. I think I'm gonna put some cardamom syrup in it, but otherwise it's very yummy. Cheers. First soup of the season. bring you along while I make my bed. I don't know. Um, so I've been thinking recently, since I've been reading so much, I, I kind of want to, I kind of want to do a little bit of, kind of want to do a little book YouTube, you know? I've been watching a lot of booktube recently and it's gotten me inspired. And you know what happens when I get inspired by something? I gotta do it. I, I gotta, I gotta replicate. I gotta renovate. I gotta explore it, you know? So I'm thinking about doing a little bit of booktube content of my own. Um, it'll be on this channel regardless of what I decide. And it'll probably end up being intertwined with my monthly vlogs anyway. So that way I'm not doing anything too different. But I don't know, that's just what I'm thinking about doing. So if y'all like books, if you guys read, then it's perfect. We're a perfect match. If not, well, I'll I'll still have I'll still have other content that you can that you can um enjoy. Um I'm really enjoying my bookstagram right now. Really, really enjoying that. I've already made a few friends, which has been cool. I usually don't end up making 
friends on social media platforms in that way. Unless I've already known them prior. So that was, that's been a fun experience. I almost have 100 followers over there. I think I'm at like 92 or something. So that's exciting. It's just fun to know that I have some like-minded people wanting to know what I think about the books that I read. It has been wholesome. If you want to know what I'm reading right now, I am reading The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstein. I think it's her last name, as well as The Haunting of Ashbury House. I think is what it's called, Ashdown, Ashbury, <laughs> by Darcy Coates. I, I'm already not doing a very good job at this. And then for audiobook, I'm listening to Talking as Fast as I Can by Lauren Graham, which has been great. It's a very sweet and wholesome read. Um, I also have three other books that I have borrowed from the library on audiobook right now. So hopefully I'll get through all of them before I have to return them. But they're all like under five hours, so it won't be too hard. Um, well, I have to get ready for work now, so... See you later. See you soon. I am back. Work is done. Now let's talk about the books, right? I wanted to go through my September reads, all the things that I've read in September, because I've read a lot in September. I have so far read 12 books, and it is September 25th, so I thought I'd just go through some of the books that I've read. Maybe all of them. I don't know how long this is going to take, so... Yeah, welcome to my book content that may or may not become regular. So, like I said, read 12 books this month. I'm keeping track on my story graph. I also use Goodreads, but I like story graph better for the most part. I like the way it keeps track of everything. The only thing I don't love on story graph is the explorability of it. It's kind of hard to find book recommendations, it's hard to find people to, to like follow and create a community with on there. Um, and the reviewing portion is not my favorite. It looks like most of my books, if you can see this little graph, that highest bar is my 3.5 star rating. You can't really see it, it's not focusing. So most of my books this month have been average or above average. Let's let's start with the lowest, shall we? Two stars. Oh, my battery's blinking. Hold on a second. Okay, the lighting has probably tr changed drastically, but battery's full, or at least 75% full. Two star reads. I only have one, and it was The Invisible Heart, an economic romance by Russell Roberts. And you may be thinking, Lucy, why would you read an economic romance? What is an economic romance? It was recommended to me. And in the recommender's defense, they hadn't read it since high school. This book was terrible. It was terrible because, okay, let me just, let me tell you all the reasons why I don't, didn't like it. First of all, economics. I don't care for economics. I don't understand it. I Money is made up. Um, so I don't really like economics. That's a little way over my head. Second thing, this book follows the story of two teachers. One's an English teacher, one's an economics teacher. Um, and they kind of start to strike up a romance, okay? And then there's this whole other like side plot um, that I'd know nothing about because I wasn't interested and basically skimmed over all of it. But it's like a CEO and their PR person or something like that trying to cover up some scandal or whatever. I don't know. So I was entirely uninterested in half of the book because I hated those two characters and I was like, I don't care what happens to them. And it doesn't seem like it, it has anything to do with this romance between the two teachers, so why should I care? I think that it does tie in at the very end, but 
I just don't care. I just, I just didn't care. The third thing I didn't like, um, it was, the whole book was basically capitalist propaganda. Um, the economics teacher was basically teaching capitalism and the benefits of capitalism and why the world isn't fair and we shouldn't, we shouldn't be banking on if the world is fair or not. We should just do our best. He was basically like, capitalism is a perfect system with imperfect people. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But I'm not a huge fan of capitalism, so the fact that the entire book was um, promoting capitalism, not for me. Not my cup of tea, brother. So that's my two-star read. My three-star book was an audiobook that I read it was called Too Fat, Too Slutty, Too Loud, The Rise and Reign of the Unruly Woman. This is by Anne Helen Peterson, and I liked this book okay. It was nonfiction, um, essay format, so basically every chapter she talked about a different unruly woman that is existing in the public eye. Um, really loved the chapters about Melissa McCarthy and Hillary Clinton. Otherwise, the rest of the book was kind of either stuff that I had already heard before or it was just delivered in a not very interesting way. So it just wasn't monumental. It was very average to me. If you're new to feminism and like the the experience of women in the public eye, then I think this is a it's a good introduction to that, but I I've been a woman all my life. Um, I'm very well acquainted with the way women are perceived. <laughs> so I didn't need an introduction. It was fine, but like, I'm not gonna read it again. 3.5, I have three stars, three books in the 3.5 star rating. Um, those books are The Call of the Wild, which I listened to in an audiobook. Uh, that's by Jack London, it's a classic. Um, Outlawed by Anna North, which is like a feminist western, and The Way We Never Were, American Families and the Nostalgia Trap by Stephanie Kuntz. All of these were good. They were good. <laughs> uh, there wasn't anything particularly revolutionary about any of them. I'll, I'll start with The Way We Never Were because I did, I really liked this book. Um, it was kind of long and very textbooky, so it, it wasn't it wasn't an easy read, but it had really good information. It was just really dry. I, I feel like it could have been presented in a way that was maybe a little bit more interesting, um, but maybe it was just meant to be a textbook. And if that's the case, good work. But that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for something a little bit more mm, with a little bit more connection. I guess. I don't know. I think it's one that I'll refer back to if I ever need some some facts and figures on the history of American family values, but otherwise it just wasn't, like I said, it wasn't revolutionary. Outlawed by Anna North. Um, it's 272 pages, which is, a, it's a short book. It's a really short book. I actually, I have it on here. The cover is cool. I got it out of the library and thank God for that because I would not want to purchase this, this book. It's a good read if you are interested in feminist westerns. I think it's just not, it's just not the genre for me. Um, I've never been into westerns so I, the reason why I read this book was because I'm trying to gather a, a list of books that are, that match very specific recommendations. We'll just put it that way. Um, so I read this for that reason. I was hoping that I would like it more. In the year of our Lord, 1894, I became an outlaw. Um, this is about, what's her name? Ada, uh, 17 year old Ada, who gets married and she lives in this town in the society where if you can't get pregnant within a year of being married, you're basically accused of witchcraft. And you have to be either, um, killed or you have to be sent away. So that's how she becomes an outlaw. She finds out that she can't have kids. Uh, and she basically joins this group of um, 
what you call it, outlaws. I, there's another word that I'm trying to think of. It's an interesting story. I think what I would have liked from this is for it to be a little bit longer so that we could go a little bit more in depth with all of the characters because there are so many characters that this author was trying to like give backstory to and make us connect with but just so little time, so little time to do it. And I think that if I had had more time with the characters, I would have been more attached. I did really appreciate the diversity of characters when it came to sexuality. But again, it didn't really go into a lot of detail, so it, it kind of felt like all the characters were swept under the rug, even though the story was being carried by the characters, if that makes any sense. So I just would have liked more from this, to be honest with you. Um, otherwise it was okay. If you like a Western and you like feminism, you should pick it up. Uh, and then The Call of the Wild, it's just, it's a classic, um, but I had never read it before. I listened to it on audiobook and the narrator was really good. Um, it was definitely the type of story that I would listen to in the winter or when I'm about to take a nap and I need something to help me fall asleep. It tells the story and the bond of this man and his dog um, in the Alaskan wilderness um, during the Klondike, Klondike Gold Rush. So um, it's just, it's just fun. It's just, it, it's just a fun little book. It's a little violent, uh, a little gory at times because there's some, there's some animal violence happening. But other than that, very good book. Four Stars, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, which I can't believe I had never read before because it was really good. Um, I listened to it on audiobook, which made it really easy to digest. And there were a lot of good lessons on being a creative. So I really enjoyed it. I'll probably purchase it so that I can have the physical copy. So, um, and then Normal People by Sally Rooney. Oh my God. Okay. I have a bajillion things that I could say about Normal People. So I feel like I should just save that, put it on the back burner because it'll take up way too much time. Just know that it's four stars for me. Um, I can understand why a lot of people like it and a lot of people don't. And we'll leave it at that for now. 4.25 stars. In this I have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I listened to that on audiobook and it was great. It was all the dark cottage core vibes I could have asked for. It was the perfect rainy day listen slash read. Um, it was perfectly eerie and perfectly cozy at the same time. Loved it. Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a very popular book and I think I would have liked it a lot more if I had read it in the summer. But because I am exclusively craving fall vibes, it didn't do it for me. That's why it's in the 4.25 because I didn't feel like it was low enough to be a four star but it wasn't high enough to be a five star. So it just felt right. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it because of the way it was written. It was written in like a documentary interview style, but I had never, I had never read that before. Obviously I've watched documentaries and stuff, but I've never read a book that was written as kind of a documentary, but it was very good. One critique that I will say is I loved the side characters. Um, especially Camilla, Karen, and Simone, but the main characters, Billy and Daisy, I was like, it was kind of hit or miss for me, and I can't decide if that was on purpose or if I was supposed to love them and it just fell flat for me. Um, they were great characters, but I just preferred the side characters that I mentioned. So that can be a good or a bad thing, I guess. And then we're jumping up to 4.75, and in here I have The Maid by Anita Perose. This is a perfect, cozy mystery, and it's only 304 pages, so it's not a huge time commitment or anything. Um, you're following Molly the Maid, who is working in a very 
luxurious high-end hotel and there happens to be a murder um, while she's working there and she ends up being like accused of some things and she has to like bring her friends together to to prove her innocence and all of this and it's just it's just a great book it's a cozy read I loved it um, and then last but not least obviously we have our five star reads of September and those books are Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine by Gail Honeyman and How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. These are two very, very different books. If you're looking for a horror book, How to Sell a Haunted House is a great one. If you don't like puppets and creepy dolls, the book is not for you. Um, but they, they did that. Grady Hendrix wrote in that trope very, very well. I was skeptical whenever I figured out kind of what what the story was about and I kind of started to gather more information about the puppets in the story I was like this is gonna be cheesy and really cliche and I'm gonna hate it but it was actually really good I finished it in one sitting so really good I think that I will probably own it at some point it's not like a priority list buy but it was very very good obviously it's five stars um and then Eleanor Oliphant this book was published in 2017 and it's the only book the author has ever written and that's crazy to me because Eleanor is one of the best characters I've read in a very long time and granted I don't read a lot of fiction this is kind of the first year in a long time that I've read a, a good chunk of fiction books um but just an incredible character, really interesting backstory, and you're you're kind of kept in the dark when it comes to her backstory for a majority of the book, but that just makes it so much more interesting. And then her friend slash potential love interest was definitely written by a woman. Mwah. He was wonderful. I loved him. Why can I not remember his name? Hold on. I tell you. I tell you his name. Raymond and he was just wonderful. I've heard that it's gonna be made into a movie, um, but I don't know what kind of timeline we've got there. Maybe eventually we'll see a movie, that would be great. Um, but those are the 12 books that I've read in September so far. If you, if you enjoy the book content, let me know. And if you don't, also let me know, but it, it may not make a huge difference of whether or not I talk about books on here. Um, I might shorten it a little bit because this is kind of long. I've been talking for almost 20 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna let you go now because I'm sure there's more that I'm gonna include in here. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Books a million. You need to go to a Barnes and Noble. You need to go to a Books a Million. You need to go to your